All right, it's Tim from Toy Tinker Tim. In this episode, I'm gonna go over some of the tools that I use more often, more frequently in the toy repair and restoration. Um, so if you're looking to kind of build up some supplies, this is kind of my hit list for tools. And uh, I've got about 14 here that I'll be covering. So this security bit set is handy because a lot of times uh, some of the toys have uh, specialty screw heads on there. So this kind of a set will get you into just about any uh, type of toy or device, electronic. Uh, it's also good handy around the house uh, for other general repairs. So paint brushes are one of those things that's just a staple. Um, as you can see here, I've got quite a few. These are all um, brushes I've collected over the years. Uh, and at times they're not just used for painting, they're brushing dust out of tight spaces. Even a soft bristle toothbrush is a key item for cleaning. And uh, if I were to go with a particular brush to say is um, a key one for me it's a it's a number five size brush and um, that one has got enough flexibility where it's not too big uh, gets in small enough with a point to do a lot of detail work so that's one of my go-to brushes is this number five brush So the drafting divider is something I use to take little uh, measurements, gauge things out that way. Uh, it's a quick handy tool. I can take a measurement of a space and transfer that over to a dowel or plastic or whatever then to make a mark. A caliper like this, um, again, I've used to gauge materials, uh, thickness, uh, even space. One side you can measure in on your thickness and the other reverse, the smaller part, you can use it to gauge uh, the space in an area as well, like uh, what you're working with that way. So the needle file set is a, is a key one, I think, to have. I've used these so many times. Uh, some of these are just flat, some are rounded, some come to a fine point. Uh, I've used them to shape the epoxy putty for repairs, uh, file down on some of the rough edges, and uh, it just, it's to me one of the very key pieces to have. So the hobby craft knife, it's like an X-Acto knife, you know. Um, and that's pretty much an essential tool. Uh, I use a number 11 blade for it, and uh, having good sharp blades means uh, less injury. So dull blades, you get a chance of being hurt more often. But speaking of which, if you turn your blade around and insert the tip into the handle, um, if you're transporting it, or even just storing it, there's less chance that you're gonna poke yourself on it. There's a little bit of an edge left exposed, but it's a lot safer of a way to handle it and store it. So a pin vise drill, uh, sometimes they're called a twist drill or whatever. There's, there's different names, but the pin vise drill is one if you do a search on, it's a little more common to go by that name. And, um, as a hobbyist uh, or woodworking, uh, my dad had one similar to this, but it was silver. But this is great for getting into tight, small areas or dealing with real fine material um, that you can get very precise. And you can see some of the screw bits, uh, the drill bits, I should say, that come with this. They are so small, so fine. 
and um, again that's one of the key pieces for sure uh, you should pick up and they're pretty inexpensive as well so it's a good good piece to have scissors it sounds like a no-brainer but again having a good sharp pair of scissors uh, is pretty key to being able to get a nice cut edge uh, and cutting in some curves on uh, perhaps decals that you're printing out yourself this little flush cutter snip type tool is great for trimming down uh, real close to a surface uh, use it for wire i've used it to snip out uh, rivets on uh, figures in order to make a repair uh, it gets right into tight spaces that way a folding utility knife uh, by design i i prefer that versus just a fixed utility knife um, it's easier to grip by this design and then also changing out the blade on these is really easy and uh, reduces your risk of cutting yourself as well. So a jeweler's screwdriver set is great. Uh, these are such small heads um, to be able to get into really t fine uh, little screws. So again, not even just for the toy repair, but also around the house, you'll find it's very helpful. So a multi-tip screwdriver set. This one I've had for years and years. Um, it's a ratcheting one. And it's also uh, magnetic, which is great because as you're unscrewing some of these things, they don't just fall out and uh, get lost. It'll grab onto the tip. Um, so it's good to be able to keep track of the screws that way. So a little butane torch uh, like this one is pretty handy. It's compact. I have a larger one, but this one is nice uh, just because it's a little more... Uh, agile for small spaces, tight conditions, um, when I've had to heat or custom shape some plastics. Uh, it gives you just enough to be able to make things workable, the plastic malleable, and uh, it's just a good compact size. So in my odds and ends category is Altoids. Altoids are good, but what I keep in here are the uh, like Q-tips and uh, toothpicks. And these are things that various projects I'll go through quite a few. And so just having a little tin like this handy uh, to get to the Q-tips for cleaning up stuff, um, toothpicks for mixing mixing things or applying real fine areas some of the epoxy resins and whatnot so it's just something handy to have at your workspace so that's pretty much on the basic uh, 14 tools here i'm sure there'll be other episodes in the future where i'll get into some more specialized tools and then also on uh, supplies materials that i keep on hand um, some of these tools you might know is a, under a different name. Uh, the names on the tools that I used here were just to keep it more searchable um, to be able to find them. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. And if you have already, thank you very much. It's uh, really helping the channel to grow. And as always, thanks for watching.